and I guess I'm being recorded. Um, so uh, I'll spend a few minutes uh, going through um, a few slides, uh, and the, the focus of the slides is going to be largely on um, the workflow package, uh, the workshop package, uh, uh, GitHub Actions that uh, we've kind of adopted for this year. Um, and then uh, we can spin off from there. Um, the idea is just to do a little bit of level setting and uh, to provide a, you know, a, at least one sing, one sort of end-to-end -end use case. Um, so uh, um, GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub Actions. Um, uh, why did I think about adopting this as opposed to Travis or um, any of a number of other uh, approaches for continuous integration and for automate software automation? And um, one was I just wanted to try it. Um, two, uh, the the resources that um, were given as uh, as default for um, an environment that GitHub Actions runs in are, are um, significant. So um, I think it's seven and a half gig of RAM, a couple of processors. Um, I forget the amount of disk space. But uh, a, a single uh, job can run for 10 hours. Um, so uh, essentially, we can we can build you know fairly complex uh, uh, workflows or pipelines um, and run them using the re the resources that GitHub Actions offers. Um, the second is that uh, GitHub Actions seems to have a fair amount of uptake in the community. Um, uh, and the third is that um, GitHub Actions uh, allows for building in uh, Linux environments um, on uh, in Docker containers uh, and also on Mac OS and Windows uh, build um, environments. So essentially, we could have um, uh, one set of um, uh, you know, one one workflow that uh, is then run over uh, multiple. Um, Operating systems and uh, potentially even versions of R. So um, I'll start with the motivation between behind the the bioconductor workshop automation. So in previous years we've had various iterations of um, building workshops, um, and uh, uh, up to about three years ago uh, we had each workshop being uh, uh, structured as a a, a package. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, we broke from that um, framework and it, uh, had workshops um, uh, as uh, basically single R markdown documents that got built into uh, a, a Git book. Um, then uh, what I wanted to be able to do was to uh, break away a little bit from the concept of um, a workshop is for uh, the Bioconductor Conference alone. Um, to allow uh, workshop developers, uh, workshop authors, to have a more isolated environment for present for building and presenting their workshops, so they could be used outside of the conference uh, without a lot of in input from um, the bioconductor team. Uh, I wanted the the workshop um, packages to include um, uh, more flexibility with respect to uh, how people wanted to present um, documentation and documents. And then finally, I wanted um, the workshop materials uh, to be executable um, for eternity. Um, uh, that is a you know a self self-contained um, uh, execution environment uh, that didn't rely on uh, say building an Amazon machine image, um, which could only run on an Amazon instance. So what we ended up with is. Um, uh, Workshop packages, uh, each structured as a bioconductor package or an R package. Uh, we want to be able to build and test those packages each time that uh, um, someone makes a commit or as they choose, as they see fit. And we want those building that building and testing um, to occur in the same environment or something so similar to uh, the the uh, resulting or the um, uh, Docker environment that we're going to use for the workshops that. Uh, errors and, and uh, warnings that showed up in the build process would equate to errors that uh, occur in building the Docker image. And then uh, finally, um, uh, just to keep things simple, uh, the, the approach that, that we put together 
uses the package down system for building websites. Um, that said, uh, you know, authors are free to use whatever um, uh, build system they want to build uh, uh, documentation and then provide a link uh, to that documentation. And um, on this, you know, on, at the same time, um, uh, workshop authors can actually swap out, if they wanted to, could swap out the uh, Bioconductor Docker image for um, a customized Docker image that, for example, instead of presenting um, the uh, uh, an RStudio um, uh, instance could present uh, uh, a Jupyter Lab instance um, with uh, R-based uh, notebooks instead of um, R Markdown documents. So all that's all that flexibility is kind of built in. But uh, we basically want, at the end of the day, we want a quality assured Docker container with all the installed packages um, and all the underlying um, uh, software dependencies met. Uh, we want a literate programming website for each workshop. So basically as um, the workshop builds um, successfully, the uh, website is updated. Uh, we want logs uh, for processing, logs of the processing for troubleshooting. And we want those logs to be easily accessible and publicly accessible, actually. It makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot. And uh, finally, we want version control for everything. Um, you can see how this, this lines up with the broader goals of um, Bioconductor. So we really wanna provide uh, developers with access to a build environment that's close to the Bioconductor build environment as possible. Um, and uh, with uh, you know, largely Natasha's work with um, building out the uh, the Bioconductor Docker environments, um, uh, we're getting close uh, to having that kind of thing, uh, that kind of um, resource available, at least for Linux. Um, we want to provide uh, continuous integration and delivery um, without building extensive infrastructure. So we can obviously build all this stuff within Bioconductor, but if we can use somebody else's uh, dime, that's great. Um, we want to encourage uh, sharing of uh, uh, CI, uh, continuous integration, continuous development, best practices through code and documentation. So what that means in practice is that uh, if I can write something that does, um, if I can write code that does something cool with my workshop, then I can share that with anyone else. Uh, it's just code. Um, no other infrastructure to set up, um, no guessing about uh, the environment, etc. And then we want to uh, facilitate building pipelines that are um, software development pipelines that are reproducible, testable, and deliver all the required build artifacts. And in this case, we have th this kind of unusual situation where we want to develop, we want the artifacts to include um, a, an entirely executable Docker container for each workshop. So um, I don't know how many of you have kids, but uh, let's see. If you've ever been to a, if you had been to a mall 10 years ago, uh, you would have seen a Build-A-Bear workshop. So, uh, and my, my kids fell in love with it. Um, uh, in any case, it was uh, to build custom customized bears. So this is build a bio seat workshop. Um, and uh, if we uh, go back and look a little bit at um, what the, the, bio, the uh, build a bio seat workshop uh, repository looks like, it's a normal package. It's a normal bioconductor or R package. And um, the vignettes that I've included uh, down at the bottom are how to build a workshop and a workshop example. So um, it's a little bit meta to have the workshop, the build bio C build a workshop, build a bio C workshop um, uh, package, having all the documentation for how to do that, but it, that's what it is. And then there's there's one other piece um, that does the magic um, in uh, to add the GitHub actions. Um, so GitHub uh, in a dot GitHub slash workflows directory, there's a YAML file. The name of the YAML file is irrelevant, and you can have um, multiple of them. Uh, and um, the, those YAML files drive uh, the um, the workflows. The actions for our use case are pretty straightforward. You would do these locally if you wanted to build your own, um, if you wanted to build a bioconductor package or an R package locally, this is what you would do. 
you would check it out from uh, Git. You would do our command uh, check, potentially our command build, um, our command install um, to make sure all that stuff worked as, as planned. Um, you would uh, need to install dependencies, of course. And then um, once everything's uh, hunky-dory, you can um, use package down to build the website. The website um, uh, is, it builds directly from the R package directory. So there's actually nothing that you need to do special to, to make that work. And then you push that to the GitHub pages. And then finally, you would um, uh, build uh, a Docker image based on uh, the workshop. So all we're doing with uh, GitHub Actions is automating this process, but you can reproduce this entirely the same in entirely the same way as you would on GitHub Actions locally by running this stuff inside uh, the Bioconductor Docker, Docker container. So what's a workflow file look like? Well, this is the top part of um, the basic checks YAML file. So with, with this file in place, um, GitHub will automatically recognize it, read it, and then uh, execute it whenever this happens. So in this case, I've had, uh, I've uh, specified that anytime that I push to the, to, uh, the repository, uh, this workflow will run. Workflows are composed of uh, jobs. The jobs run independently of each other. So um, uh, there's, um, there's basically no crosstalk between jobs. The jobs can have names. This workflow actually has only one job um, and it runs on Ubuntu, Ubuntu latest actually. Um, that's not that important to us because we're going to use a container uh, to actually run these steps. And uh, we're going to use Bioconductor Docker and we're going to use the devel tag. Notice that this devel tag here um, doesn't pin us to a specific version of Bioconductor Docker. It just tells us to use the devel, uh, the current, basically the current devel um, uh, tagged Bioconductor Docker um, container. We can pin <clears throat> we can pin this Docker container to a specific um, version by just changing devel to the SHA uh, the hash of of the uh, Bioconductor Docker. What that means is that Natesh as as Natesh makes changes to Bioconductor Docker, if we have it pinned to a specific uh, hash, our our um, workflow will never see those changes. So this is a, a sort of a, a built-in way to uh, guarantee that your bioconductor Docker image doesn't change underneath you. And then um, jobs are composed of steps and the steps um, come in fla different flavors. But in this case, we're gonna directly use somebody else's action as the first step to check out our repository. So what this is going to do in practice is that it's uh, going to go to our repository, check it out from Git, put it into the local work directory um, within our Bioconductor Docker uh, container, and it's, that's going to stick around for the, um, the remainder of our job. And then uh, the first step uh, that we run here is to um, install some packages and uh, or, um, to check the dependencies. Um, and um, you can see here that there's a there's a cool system that allows us to um, well one give a name but this is the fun part the run here um, is uh, essentially a script but it doesn't have to be a bash script <laughs> we can tell uh, uh, GitHub Actions to use our script as the shell and then we can instead of having to write bash commands we can write um, we can write uh, our, our code directly. So we're going to rely on that a little bit. Um, we can uh, go ahead and install dependencies. And you'll notice that, oops, you'll notice here that when I uh, do install dependencies, this is directly our code. There's no magic here. This is uh, 
running within our uh, repository, our checked out repository, and um, then uh, uh, doing install um, in the same way that we would locally. So we could actually do these steps locally, check them, make sure they work, and if we need to, make changes. Um, our command check shows one other detail. We can actually uh, include environment variables into our, our steps. Um, and in this case, we're, we're going to include a, an R command um, check environment variable. Um, uh, the one other piece that we need in addition to um, our R command uh, check and install is um, an action to build a Docker container. So I put this at the end of the workflow. And uh, what this is going to do for us is um, if the workflow succeeds up to the place that um, the package down is built and all those kind of, kind of things. Basically, we, we, if the package works, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, build the Docker container. And um, there are a couple of little details here. This is gonna get pushed to Docker Hub. So we actually have to include our Docker Hub um, username and password, and we have to give the repository a name. And then the last uh, three lines here are for tagging. So this tag with ref, tag with SHA, and tags allows us to um, tag the bio or tag the um, uh, the Docker in, uh, the Docker image, the, the resulting Docker container image, with um, uh, any references. Uh, in this case, would be master, uh, the SHA, the, the the GitHub checkout, uh, or the GitHub um, commit ID, and uh, the tags latest. So we can refer to this this um, uh, Docker container, this resulting Docker container with um, just like this, we can tag it. We can use the tag for master if we wanted. We can use the tag for the commit ID if we wanted, and we can also specify latest. Uh, the package down that we build ends up uh, looking like uh, um, a normal package down website. Uh, we get uh, references to any R uh, files and uh, the vignettes are built um, as so-called articles. Um, in this case, the, the how to build a bioconductor, how to build a workshop package um, is uh, one, of the, um, one of the articles. And this goes through in a fair amount of detail, and it's been updated by um, some folks who have uh, clarified things. Um, in a fair amount of detail, you can see it's not very long, though, um, for how to build your own uh, uh, workshop package um, with, the, with the automation in GitHub Actions um, kind of built in. And um, just jump over to show a few of the GitHub um, Actions uh, uh, features. Uh, again, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. We can uh, specify matrix builds. So we can have a single workflow that um, uh, is going to run in parallel on uh, multiple R versions or multiple um, operating systems. Uh, as we see fit, uh, any language that you can run inside a container, and in fact, um, essentially any executable that you can run inside a container, you can use to run GitHub Actions. Um, ultimately, you get, we'll go back to that, ultimately you get um, uh, the, um, uh, the build logs um, for every build. You can use workflows and um, actions that are, are built by other people in the community. And uh, let me jump back over to the, um, the Build a BioC workshop uh, repo and show you what actions looks like. So you probably, have, for people who have used it, I'm gonna tell you things you already know. But um, for those who haven't, When I click on actions, I can see here that um, 
the uh, the workflows that I have in this in this package are listed here. There's only one in this case, um, and I can see that uh, as this as these workflows have run, I can see which workflow was run. The check mark means it worked, when it ran, and how long it took. So that filters down to just this workshop. And uh, let's go over to uh, this particular run of the workshop, or run of the, um, uh, the GitHub Actions. And um, you can have multiple jobs. In this case, we have just one job uh, that has multiple steps. So if I click on job, the job name, um, these are the different steps that will run. A check mark or green check mark beside them means that they ran successfully. Um, and uh, let's look at uh, the build package down, for example. This starts with what I actually ran, uh, the, the, uh, the run, um, uh, the script that ran. And then you can see as it goes through here uh, what it's actually doing. This is the output directly that you would re receive directly um, if you ran it uh, locally as well. And um, if you end up with errors, then those are easy to catch. And um, by clicking on, uh, let's see, uh, now I'm forgetting. Um, we can actually, uh, uh, grab these, um, grab a line from the, uh, uh, from the output and send that around as a link so that we can share our, the error message directly with people um, who would help us potentially troubleshoot. Um, I'm going to stop there because uh, I think we need some time to, to um, talk, but any questions? No question. Hey, Sean, do you think that like uh, indiv individual developers should be um, should be writing their own GitHub actions, or is that like uh, something that experts such as you or you know develop that expertise on the core team for common actions, or what do you think? Um. I, yeah, so ideally, um, we'd have a a, um, a little stable of GitHub Actions that we could um, share with people at multiple levels. So the way that I've done it here is probably not uh, uh, a um, uh, a pattern that we want to continually follow, follow, which is to have um, a template repository that has some magic in it um, that does some magical things and um, hopefully works for people. Um, this has largely worked, uh, but but I think the the approach for for R could be sort of mul we could have multiple levels of approaches. One is that the actions themselves um, are first class citizens, so we can write a GitHub repository that has actions in it, and we can refer to those as um, uh, steps in the in our workflows. Um, so that level of um, abstraction is is one way to go. A second way to go is um, the way that some some of the uh, R folks have have done it, which is to do the use this kind of approach, which is that um, we have a, a set of um, uh, YAML um, directives that potentially even has some variables in it. And when we say um, uh, say uh, use this uh, package down action, um, the uh, package down action will get written into um, a workflow file. That will fill in the, that package action. Package down action will have a few things like maybe the the, the package name, or for the Docker for the Docker build, um, uh, uh, use this um, uh, GitHub action Docker um, that will uh, fill in the details of um, the uh, repository, the Docker repository name, uh, those kinds of things. Um, and then the third, and I 
think for developers, this is something that I think we as a as a community should aim for, is sort of just a higher bar for what we um, uh, use in our um, package development um, processes. Um, so uh, I think that too much automation and too much black magic um, ends up um, uh, hurting us in the long run because uh, people don't necessarily recognize that these tools can be used for really pretty amazing things, um, uh, you know, building websites, updating shiny applications, um, uh, you know, doing very complex data manipulations to uh, rebuild an experiment hub package on the fly um, every day based on changes to updated data, whatever, uh, those kinds of things. That creativity is something that I think we'd like to have the community, um, you know, work toward. Um, so, so we don't want to make it too hard. We want to get people on ramped, but we don't want to make it too easy either. And I think this this one simple workflow, I don't know how other people feel about it, but this one simple workflow has been a learning experience for a lot of us uh, because of the sort of some of the rough edges that have come up um, that have been solvable, but they've been rough edges. So that was a long answer. Sorry, Martin. That's great. So it pointed me to use this, and I can see there are a bunch of use underscore GitHub under actions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, uh, and and to the extent that we can leverage those, we should. Um, I'll be honest. When we started this, uh, a lot of those actions didn't exist. So, um, and uh, and I needed to learn the the nuts and bolts. So that's the reason we ended up going down this path. But uh, but I agree. We could have a a, a GitHub. A, a BioC workshops GitHub action that uh, does all the stuff that needs to get done uh, for a new package um, or for an existing package uh, that just takes care of all the details. Yeah, I was going to say that um, I've also written my own actions as well. So one to one to automatically create uh, screenshots for um, the IC package uh, for its vignettes, and another one to post GIFs to our work Slack. Um, so there's there's two yeah it, it's the, I gotta say you know it's actually it's actually easy once you get the hang of it but it's not it's not like your usual bash shell programming so it it, no. it takes a bit of effort to wrap your head around um, but once you get the hang of it, it it's pretty it's pretty smooth um, what was I gonna say uh, yeah so yeah I, I think it, it it would be interesting to see if we could have like a bioconductor action like a Docker action right for just the sort of Routine task of building a bioconductor package, right? Of check, uh, you know, checking, building and checking a bioconductor package on GitHub, right? Because that's that's actually the number one thing that I have, like that that the various packages that I'm involved in uh, require from GitHub Actions, and each of those different packages now has a slightly different variant of the workflow because you know I copy and paste them, and then you know they just sort of, you know diverge over time, right? And it'd be nice just to have, you know, a reference, a reference bioconductor action for just building and checking, like, you know, just, just building and checking a package, right? It doesn't do anything more than that. Build, check, and package, and then, uh, um, you know, we could just, we could just, you know, point people to it, and then their workflow files would be pretty, uh, you know, pretty light instead of having just, you know, 10 different steps in there. Yeah, I was just thinking actually. I mean, that happens to to a lot of packages, right? Because big GitHub actions have, have been fluctuating a lot since they were uh, introduced, and so I think kind of every package now that uh, uses the action has kind of a snapshot of what the best practices of the actions were at that point in time. Uh, so I, I saw Martin actually uh, pointed to um, Leonardo's uh, uh, BioCities. And I'm not sure. I, I was tempted at some point to write something equivalent, and I just got put off because I was I didn't want to constantly update every week the new actions uh, that were coming out. And each action, I, I don't know if we mentioned that yet, have versions, which is very useful to sort of lock and refer, uh, once you have a workflow that's working, you don't want to point to the master branch of the the action that's evolving because there's some bugs that are introduced, so some improvement that actually break up other stuff. So this thing is uh, the, the the version of actions is quite quite helpful, and yeah, I think Leo has has put quite a lot of work because there's a recent issue with the the Git uh, the even the checkout the the first action of pretty much every workflow out there 
that checks out the the, the code from the from GitHub has changed and impacted the package down deployment, which also uses Git. So there are some. It, it is very fluctuating. So I'm not sure exactly how uh, how it's stabilizing these days. Yeah, I agree with those comments. Um, and uh, um, I still, so from the point of view of the Bioconductor project itself, I still think that this is um, a developer level tool. Um, this isn't something that uh, I think we'd want to have Bioconductor rely on um, and, and to have it be sort of uh, officially supported and have all the bells and whistles to do updates and things like that to be because ultimately a lot of this stuff hap it happens on github and that's out of bioconductors control i do think that there's um there's a an opportunity here though to um consider how the bioconductor build system um uh could and uh, could evolve to support um these kinds of um uh actions whether they be on travis or whatever um and uh so one thing that um, that would help there, um, so the, the bioconductor um, Docker, um, obviously it, it serves that purpose, lar largely serves that purpose, meets that need for Linux, but um, for Windows and, and Mac, um, there hasn't, we, we haven't, I think as a project, um, come up with a way of making a reproducible uh, Mac or Windows environment and I think that one of the things that that we could work toward is to um, uh, uh, to um, have um, uh, environment build environment tools that will um, allow this um, reproducible build environment for Windows and for Mac. And the closer we get to that, the closer we can get to a GitHub Actions um, that uh, uses the same the same or at least a similar build environment. Um, to uh, to what Bioconductor uses. Yeah, at some point, at some point, they get you know they're going to realize, hold on, these guys are like running like you know so many jobs, <laughs> and at some point they're going to say, hey, you, you know, better pay up. <laughs> so, well, I, I think if Bioconductor as a as a group were doing that, that would probably be true. But um, to be honest, our, our Bioconductor community even a thousand developers is something less than a, than a drop in the bucket <laughs> um, yeah. compared to their commercial um, clients. So uh, I don't think we have to worry too much about it. Um, the one nice thing about GitHub Actions though, uh, is that uh, it does free us up in a couple of ways. One, um, we can have GitHub Actions runners of our own. So we can establish uh, GitHub Actions runners that um, we that we maintain, uh, Bioconductor maintains. And the other thing that um, uh, we don't tend to use a lot of, uh, we haven't tended to use a lot of in software develop in these software development approaches is um, to use webhooks. So um, we could have some of the lifting, um, some of the simple lifting, uh, be done on GitHub Actions, but we can also develop specific uh, build steps that require you know, super specialized um, build environments, maybe like a, a single package builder, um, and uh, have one of the actions be um, to, to call the webhook that would then do the building on um, another system, uh, this, the action on another system. So there's a lot of flexibility, um, but I think the, the, the goal in my mind is to somehow bring together the developer experience with the, the, um, the build environments that are similar or the same as the bioconductor build environments. I know there's some other people on the phone who have used um, uh, actions for creative things. Does anybody else have any um, thoughts or share experiences? I can say a little bit about my use of GitHub Actions. So I use GitHub Actions to do a weekly build of the Devel Docker image and publish to Docker Hub. So the GitHub Action 
pulls in the base rocker images, our version, our studio, edits a few lines of code within their script, fills it on that uh, Ubuntu latest instance. Everything is, so all the images built are local to that instance which GitHub provides. So when I push the latest build of Bioconductor Docker Devel, it's updated, but the rocker images aren't updated to the latest level. That kind of makes sense. Have I described that properly? Yeah, I think so. I guess a different part of that is that that's sort of like a cron job, right? Where the it isn't on a, on commit or something like that, but it's on schedule. Exactly, it's scheduled to do that every Friday at five p.m. or something like that. Random time. Don't ask me why it's chose Friday or five p.m. Yeah, my Slack bot runs every day at nine a.m. So <laughs> every morning, everyone sees my Slack bot at work. <laughs> Yeah, I build a bunch of Excel spreadsheets for um, uh, government employees for COVID data every night, and uh, they love it. <laughs> yeah, I did something similar recently. So it's, um, I, I called it BIOS Roulette. Uh, don't ask me why, I didn't find a better name at the time, but uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> using the, the package to uh, to query the list of bioconductor package and just randomly sample uh, a software package, annotation package, and uh, that's, that's one experiment package. So that then every day at 9 a.m., uh, I think at 6 a.m. or something, so when I wake up, I can just go to a website and rediscover a bioconductor package and, I don't know, stimulate myself to go through the vignette and say, oh yeah, that thing exists, or that's a, that organism supporting the annotations, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, and that's on a, on a cron job. So when I discovered I could do that, and all it does, right, I remove all the unit testing and all I do is uh, calling the R markdown render site on a typical RMD of books, just, just like people are doing. Uh, yeah, and then with, I think a few people have also written books, uh, literal uh, um, Git books uh, using R markdown and you can uh, deploy that fairly easily. So that's, uh, the, I, I've done it for a Jaringan slide as well. So I've got repositories where I've got an RMD, uh, index.rmd, and same thing. So I'm just using a, uh, a very minimalistic workflow. And the, the main thing it does is rendering into an HTML and a PDF and uh, pushing that to uh, GitHub pages. And there you go. Every time I push to the master branch, the slides get recompiled and they're on GitHub pages uh, ready to go. So there's really a ton of, a ton of things you can do. Yeah, I'm trying to do that with my um, I'm trying to do that with my uh, the, the conference presentation right now, but I keep on running into LaTeX errors, so I've got to sort that out. <laughs> uh, right, just check out the so the IC Workshop slides repo, right? That's where I've put the, the slides for this uh, thing. And so yeah, when you guys, LaTeX, right? uh, I'm generating a PDF and an HTML because Jaringan has a Chrome print, I think, function which uh, generates both the PDF and the HTML and uh, I can't remember what I've done to to install all the dependencies, but for some reason it works. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm still I'm still missing one dependency. I've got to figure out which one it is. <laughs> Maybe you can use um, Tiny Tech on some rocker image and just tlmgr install whatever packages you need. Yeah, I I mean it's not it's not so hard. I I just need to actually figure out which one it is. Like it's one of it's one of the text live something somethings. I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but it, it, it's it's not it's not a big deal. I just haven't bothered to to do that. I mean, the uh, same the same the cool thing about it is like once you build your own like the 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 way I usually like to do it is I um uh you know uh, in the container like uh, in in the same repo I set up a Docker file and then the action uses that Docker file so the action runs on the Docker file in the same repo um, and in this case I have um you know, in this case this particular Docker file. Uh, has all the things to actually like build the build the PNGs um, of the images that I'm using, like compile all the PNGs and then compile the PDF as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. You can you can do a lot of you can do a lot of cool stuff. You know, if you just combine it compi uh, combine it with a Docker ex executable, basically.
for those who are diving into this stuff, I just I'll just mention there's a there's a local GitHub Actions runner um, that you can set up. I've not tried it, but um, but uh, for people who are developing GitHub Actions uh, or have really really complex workflows, um, uh, that might be something to to try. There's nothing worse than a GitHub Action that runs for like six hours and then uh, errors out, and they're like, oh geez, another day. <laughs> um, so uh, having some of that stuff be available locally is is, is helpful. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if the book can run on GitHub Actions, like the, the single cell book. What was the number of, uh, what was the resourcing on the, on, the, uh, on the runners again? Off the top of my head, it's two vCPUs, two virtual CPUs, and seven or seven and a half gig of RAM. Yeah. Okay, probably not then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it could probably get 90% of the way and then it'll stop at the last chapter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that last chapter? No. <laughs> uh, uh, a whole bunch of people. But yeah. it, it, to be fair, that last chapter has like 300,000 cells in it. So um, that, that's the one that usually takes my, my computer like one hour to go through. Sean, uh, one question. Uh, you mentioned that you ran Docker containers in GitHub Actions, and can you also run Singularity containers? Uh, good question. I don't think so right now. Um, but uh, I, I'm not sure that I would say that that's a disadvantage. Um, the Singularity, so my experience with Singularity is that it's, um, uh, while it's it's useful for wrapping um, for containing software, it's uh, definitely not very um, portable uh, because of the the reliance on um, uh, on on uh, volume mounting to to work in a way that um, uh, well fits portable. So uh, so I'm not sure how well. Um, a singularity image would actually work in an environment um, like uh, GitHub Actions, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It's just a little surprise by the fact that with uh, bin mounting in the in the Docker container, you could end up writing files as root and stuff like that, and that that's deployed in a in an environment such as GitHub. Um, I was a little surprised. Yeah, I think the the way these things the way things these things are set up is that they're um, they're sandboxed from each other, so um, you only hurt yourself. Um, uh, yeah, so I think if I remember correctly, um, uh, in the terms of use, you basically promise not to do anything malicious or um, uh, do like um, uh, Bitcoin mining. Uh, in these kinds of things. There's nothing to stop you really from doing it other than um, GitHub itself monitoring you. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, in theory, you could have a porn site running for 10 hours if you wanted. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how that would work, but, <laughs> um, but you're right, Docker gives you a lot of power. I just wanted to make an additional comment, I guess. The one thing I like about GitHub Actions to add to the advantage Sean said in the beginning is it's all in the same platform. Like my code is hosted on GitHub. It's built on GitHub. I can see the build reports of whatever job I'm running on GitHub. Like it's not a new platform. And I really think the documentation is much better than Davis or Jenkins or anything else. They've put a lot of effort into this. Yeah, I agree. I, I started with Jenkins with the so I, I started with the idea that we would use Jenkins to do the workshop building this year. And um uh so I, I was able to get that working, but um but the hoops to jump through um and the amount of infrastructure that you have to maintain to make that work. Um uh, and is 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 significant. Um, and uh, GitHub Actions is is nice as as Nitesh points out. 
it's, it's essentially just writing a text file. Um, and it's infinitely shareable. Uh, the, the number of people that uh, have been able to help out with troubleshooting um, has just has grown quite a bit um, just in the last couple of uh, weeks uh, with the, the workflows um, or the workshops uh, as people have gotten better at using them. I'm not sure we've mentioned yet also that Docker has started actually hosting also, uh, sorry, Docker, GitHub has started uh, hosting Docker images, right? Uh, they've got their own repository now, which I've started using, and then you've got this little tab saying packages at the top. So um, I, I don't really know what to think of whether to choose between uh, Docker Hub and um, GitHub packages. So at the moment, I'm kind of pushing to both uh, in, in new repositories. Um, yeah. So I don't know if anyone's got preferences. I think there's still a few hiccups with the public packages on GitHub uh, Docker, uh, because private uh, private account or paid account have more control over uh, what they can do in the public one. You can't delete images, for example. Um, yeah. But I mean, it, it's works. just... Yeah? It's just a, another registry for hosting Docker images. Exactly. Like so, and you have to install Docker to build your image anyway. Mm -hmm. You have to authenticate with GitHub. Just like if I wanted to push on the Google container registry, I'd have to authenticate Docker with the registry to push there. So, yeah. I mean, I personally don't think too much of the fact that, oh, there's one more place to push to. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I like the idea as we just mentioned that it's kind of all integrated. So like uh, GitHub is trying to pull, let's say, a lot of services together, uh, but it's not quite as mature, I think, as Docker Hub. Uh, I think there's still, uh, especially one thing about uh, logging in. You need to Docker login into the GitHub yeah. uh, registry, and I think that's a major caveat for some people who cannot. I think you cannot pull from private repositories uh, on GitHub. Uh, as a, you cannot pull the Docker image from the private repositories from a GitHub action. There we go. That's the whole sentence. Uh, yeah. So I have um, one more thing to say. Since uh, I'm guessing this GitHub Actions has brought in a lot of people who are workshop authors for BioC 2020. So I just added a BioC 2020 tag. It's totally optional. It's more like a convenience that if you want to keep developing your workshop um, for some reason after today, uh, then you should depend on the BioC 2020 tag instead of the devel tag for Bioconductor Docker. That transition is probably a good, or having having ha having the tag originally is probably something like best practice anyway, right? Where where you you pin pin the requirements to a particular set of resources. Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 definitely something that of all the things that I could have envisioned going wrong, um, having. Uh, Rocker change to uh, using binary packages and having that break downstream processing was not one of them. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's caught of all the head. It's really, as far as I can tell, the only significant headache um, with this process is that uh, something changed in the upstream um, uh, Docker container. And and as Martin pointed out, if we had pinned uh, things to a specific uh, version of the Docker container, we probably would have avoided that problem. Great conversation. We do have a couple minutes left. Does anyone have anything else that they wanted to bring up or talk about or ask? Uh, 
uh, uh, well, completely unrelated, but uh, you know those uh, that dependency badge, Laurie? Yes, I know. Uh, we've been a little overloaded with conference stuff that's between the single package builder, but I have not forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. It is on my to-do for in-between conference sessions. Hey, Sean, I also wanted to ask, or uh, kind of related to the, the Docker images, which seems to have been a really great solution for for the developers to make uh, workshops that are in a consistent format. But then, in and, and maybe with the shift to a virtual conference anyway, things change because people are sitting there on the computers that they probably were used for their work, and so they want to do the workshop on the computer that they're going to be using for their work. So maybe it's less important to have like a repro robust reproducible environment. And the, the, the practice in previous years had been to have this uh, AWS machine instance that had, you know, the necessary software. And somehow you've, you've, you've solved one problem, but maybe not not the other, but then maybe the problem is no longer, like how do, how do people actually use, uh, participate in the workshop? Now that they've got this excellent workshop, how do they participate in it? And they, you know, they start by installing a bunch of packages and immediately stumbling because uh, they're not experienced users and their, their computer is uh, seven years out of date and running R from uh, four years ago and so on. Um, which is probably yeah. more realistic, but. Um, so there's a couple of answers to that. Um, well, three, uh, at least. Uh, one is that uh, people can run Docker locally, right? And um, uh, right now, installing Docker on Windows, Mac, and Linux is um, usually something like brew install Docker. Um, so it's in some way, yes, in some ways that adds complexity. But in other ways, it um, uh, reduces um, uh, variables. Uh, so people could run things locally on Docker. The second is that um, uh, I think you were the one that um, pointed out a couple of issues that I had with uh, um, the instructions for running Docker containers on the cloud. So again, I agree that that adds some complexity um, at the the, the cost of complexity is reduced variables by having people run things in the cloud. Um, running a, one of these uh, workshops in the cloud for a couple of hours is going to be on the order of 40 cents. Um, so uh, each cloud provider provides between 200 and 300 dollars worth of free um, resources. So those the, that could be done for anyone. Um, the third, uh, which is um, the third approach, which is one that um, uh, I've played a lot with, which is to um, look at uh, approaches for um, spinning up these images, these Docker uh, images um, in an automated fashion. And so it, so I've been talking to the Google, to Google engineers about this. It turns out that there's not, as far as they know, um, an open source package uh, that will allow you to sort of stand up um, infrastructure for um, having people uh, uh, log in with their email address, um, maybe even no password, just an email address to identify them and uh, give them a list of Docker containers and say, click here to start. Um, that doesn't seem to exist. Um, there's some code that can allow that kind of thing to happen um, built around um, uh, JupyterHub. Uh, so JupyterHub, unfortunately, will not run um, Docker images kind of directly. It, it really wants um, uh, environments instead. Um, so uh, uh, yes, and Renku could help. Um, so the point, the point is um, uh, there are multiple potential ways to run uh, Docker containers in an automated fashion. And we just need to, to decide um, uh, what approach we want to use. Where I'm going right now is to um, build, what I'm trying to do right now is to build a, a, um, a system that will proxy um, users to um, 
uh, Docker containers running in a Kubernetes environment. Um, Kubernetes is kind of cool in that uh, you can spin up instances in, you know, um, seconds, um, uh, in some cases, milliseconds. Um, so uh, the idea here would be that uh, people go to a website, they log in with their um, username, password, email, and password. Um, they're presented with a list of the 24 um, containers, uh, and they can um, be allowed to run two at a time, no more, uh, and um, that uh, after you know an hour of not being used, uh, they'll shut down. Um, that's something that uh, I think uh, Bioconductor would benefit from greatly, um, and uh, um, could become sort of our our go-to approach for um, using these kinds of um, workflow systems to produce ad hoc uh, um, conferences uh, or education materials. So that's a programming task, but but that's that's the vision. Kind of opens the door to different ways people might use Bioconductor in the future. Like maybe, maybe the norm would be to run Bioconductor within a container on the cloud. I mean, it, it certainly um, it, it certainly changes uh, our approach to things like um, big data, uh, or or even um, once once people are running inside a cloud environment, we have the option of. Um, authenticating those people or authorizing those people to use other cloud tools, um, so BigQuery or um, or Spark, uh, for example. So there's there's lots of opportunities there, but um, but we need to make sure that you know we have the 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 guy the guardrails in place um, uh, to make sure that uh, um, we don't pay a lot uh, or we know what we're paying anyway, and um, that uh, the user experience is a, is is a reasonable one. And again, I think the, the workshops are a great use case. Yeah. Great. Really cool. If anybody else has ideas about um, uh, other options for running the Docker containers, that's the cool thing here. We don't, once we have a Docker container, there's lots of flexibility about how to run them and how people interact with them. So somebody mentioned Renku. Um, Exceed has some resources as well to run Docker containers, and I haven't looked into those yet. Awesome, and that puts us at time.